The snivel comes from the center propagating itself and takes on the color that is given to it. A great power, this snivel, as you can see. Certain people have so understood it that they use it for bad reasons. See the snivel sect, for example. However, the snivel comes from the heart. If he's well oriented, he dazzles and lights up everything. He is the element of progress, and by his acceptance in the collective unconsciousness, he created favorable conditions for evolution. If not for revolution, the schnibble is a cloud which carries you, Woodruff, and which will make your quest successful. Good luck, little schnibble. Hello again. Today I wanted to talk about a very curious game. It's called Woodruff and the Snibble of Azimuth or The Bizarre Adventures of Woodruff and the Snibble in North America. It's from 1995. It was released for Windows 3.1, which is already kind of curious. But what interests me the most was how few people actually know about that game and how big of a flop it was, at least uh, in the United States. Um, actually, I think this is the first review retrospective video in English on YouTube as far as I've seen. Um, there are quite a few long plays if you want to see the game as a whole. But yeah, for a game with uh, such a big budget that was released by Sierra Online in the US, that's really something. And it's not a bad game either. It received mostly very positive reviews, but nobody seemed to want to buy the thing. At this time, the humans were finally able to leave the core of the Earth, where they were hidden away for several centuries to survive the radiations left by the last atomic conflicts. At the, heart the game was mainly developed by Pierre Guillot and Muriel Trami at Cocktail Vision. Both have worked at the Goblin series before, which share a very similar art style and are also adventure games, but otherwise they are not related in any way with the story or the world. So why was the game not a bigger success? It looks great, it's quite funny, it has good voice acting, it's quite long, but there are some quirks that I imagine were really off-putting for many of the people that would have been interested at one point. First of all, I think the scenario is quite bizarre. Um, everything looks strange and outerworldish and I expect that people maybe had a hard time to actually relate to this world. I mean it's not so different to Goblins but Goblins felt a bit more at home in a fantasy setting and Woodruff is really out there. The game has a very unique vibe because it mixes slapstick humor and sometimes really cringy over the top characters with some messaging actually behind. There is quite a lot of politics if you look deep into it about power abuse, about struggle of the poor against the elite. I don't know how I should explain it in a different way but to me it actually kind of feels French. So it, it makes sense that this game comes from the country that it comes from because if you look at movies from that country or other media you oftentimes get a similar vibe that mixes things that feel at odds but actually work together quite well if you're into that. So it's not exactly what I would call a mainstream setting. And on the other hand, adventure games were a bit on the decline and not even that popular in the US anyway. So if you compare it to another game that was released in 95 like Full Throttle, you can see like that Full Throttle would be much more appealing to a broader audience than Woodruff and the Snivel. But as unique as the game is, I'm pretty sure if you played it back then, you will still remember it quite fondly as I do. Also, it would be really cool if you subscribe to the channel if you're interested in retro gaming or Star Citizen. Or just give the video a like, that will also help the algorithm. Now definitely there are a few reasons why the game has not become an all-time classic. The puzzles are quite hard and there is quite some moon logic involved so I would advise to use a walkthrough at least at some points when you really struggle to get through it. There are not many interactions actually, at least at the beginning, um, but later on your inventory can become quite full and it's really not always obvious what you have to do next. 
Also, you can die in the game only later on and not as much as in normal Sierra games, so it's not a big issue, but it's still advised to save quite frequently just to be sure. Also, the sound effects and the music are downside. The sound effects, especially the walking sound effect, is getting really annoying over time and there is actually no real music. You only have the atmosphere in the background and sometimes you hear a few instruments but you can't really speak of a soundtrack. Finally, there are so many locations that it's quite easy to get lost. You get the ability to teleport later on, which is really handy, but still you have so many options that you can get confused quite easily. So would I recommend playing the game despite all the downsides? Yes, absolutely. I think the game is so unique that if you're interested in old adventure games, you really should give it a try. The atmosphere and the humor is really one of a kind and it still looks really cool and it's a world that I was really keen to revisit. Thank you for watching and I hope you give the game a try and with that, see ya! Nothing matters now. Azimuth is probably dead and Cocut will never love me and the bigwig is just too powerful. Why go on? Oh, 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 oh,